Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron and this is Mind Science episode 13. I'm really excited for today's video because all of the previous episodes in this series have sort of been leading us up to this topic, which is going to be all about healing the shadow. Now this is a really big topic to try and tackle in just one video, which is why I've spent many of the previous episodes sort of laying the foundation. So if you haven't seen any of the previous videos in this series yet, I'm not going to recommend you watch all 12 of them before you watch this one, but I will put links in the description box below to the four most relevant videos in this series that I suggest you watch before diving into this episode. So even though we've already talked about this quite a bit in this series, let's go ahead and quickly recap what the shadow is. The term the shadow was first coined by the famous psychologist Carl Jung in the early to mid 20th century who began noticing this phenomenon of self-rejected aspects of the psyche that play around in the unconscious mind. The word shadow represents those aspects of us that have not yet been brought into the light of awareness. And these shadow aspects end up creating a lot of dark and destructive behaviors and we remain completely unaware of what their cause is. We are all born into a social environment that deeply molds our concept of self as we go through life, particularly in early childhood. We're taught by our parents and guardians that certain expressions are okay and others are not okay. Expressions such as laughter, politeness, and gratitude are overly celebrated while expressions like anger, insecurity, and pride are condemned. We're taught that it's not acceptable to feel certain things. And because it's in our nature to want acceptance, we reject and suppress these feelings within us as a means to help us earn love. Whatever aspects of ourselves that are seen to block us from receiving love are banished into the dungeons of our subconscious, where they then become a part of our shadow side. Depending on what type of household you were raised in, the severity of this might differ, but every single human who was raised in any kind of social environment has a shadow. You could imagine your shadow like a long, dark corridor full of prison cells on either side, which are filled with different versions of you from different periods of your life that have been rejected and exiled from your awareness. From the perspective of your subconscious mind, you literally are what you experience, so it doesn't know the difference between you and your pain. So when you reject the pain that you feel and hate it, your subconscious mind sees it as a hated aspect of yourself. So by hating our pain rather than loving it, we imprison our inner child who is hurt and wounded and we tell them that what they are feeling is not okay. So what happens when an aspect of ourselves is placed into our shadow? It becomes unconsciously projected outside of us and we begin to judge and hate others for those aspects that we've rejected in ourselves. It is a part of the self that is no longer in our conscious awareness because we believe that we've successfully gotten rid of it by hating and denying it. So it then becomes a negative core belief that shapes the way we see everything. As I've talked about in many previous videos, a belief becomes like a filter that we see all of reality through, and we have no conscious awareness of the fact that we are creating the evil that we see. The example I often use is of somebody wearing a pair of orange goggles and looking out and seeing an orange world. And somebody might say to them, hey, you know that the world's not actually orange, right? You know that you're making it orange. And the person might reply, are you insane? I'm not making the world orange. That's ridiculous. The world is orange. I'm just seeing what's actually there. But of course, you're never seeing what's actually there. You're seeing your own state of being that's being pasted onto everything you see and experience. So somebody with repressed emotional trauma from childhood, for example, looks out and sees a frightening, scary world full of bad people. And so they believe that that's what the world actually is. Now you may be wondering, why does our mind do this to us? The subconscious mind is extremely intelligent and projection is its primary defense mechanism against these self-rejected aspects that we don't want around anymore. So whenever you make something about yourself not okay, you're sending a strong intention to your subconscious mind, 
I do not want to see this part of me anymore. And so your subconscious mind obeys your orders and removes that part of you from your conscious awareness. Then it projects it onto others as a means of guaranteeing that you'll always see it outside of you, but you'll never see it inside of you. So the irrefutable truth of the shadow is that anything that triggers you is something that needs healing within you. Whatever you look upon with judgment rather than compassion is the reflection of a rejected fragment of yourself that is crying out to be made whole. If a boy grows up in a very strict household where he is punished for being angry, he will grow up believing that his anger is unacceptable and it should never be allowed to express itself. So as the boy gets older, he becomes extremely passive aggressive because that energy is still inside, but he's not allowing himself to feel it because he was taught as a child that if he shows anger, he won't receive love. A little girl who grows up in an environment where beauty is overly praised will believe that the only way to receive love is to look as beautiful as possible. She will then have a hard time being seen in public wearing sweatpants with no makeup. She believes that she is less valuable or less worthy of love when she isn't covered in makeup and designer clothes. This creates a huge insecurity complex in many women because society inherently teaches women that their beauty is their value. So anything about her that isn't deemed beautiful gets banished into the shadow. If you grew up in a very religious household, then chances are that your shadow is particularly heavy because religion literally thrives off of guilt and self-rejection. If you aren't guilty and ashamed of who you are, religion can't keep you coming back every weekend. Religion has taught you from the time you were a child that you are full of sin and evil, and you aren't supposed to give love to your sinful nature, you're supposed to hate it and reject it. They'll tell you that this is because God hates sin. Imagine the kind of shadow it creates when a child grows up believing that they are genuinely broken and screwed up. Hey little Tommy, guess what? You are such an inherently filthy, sinful piece of shit that God had to murder his own son just to forgive you. Isn't that good news? In most Christian denominations, children are even taught to curse and rebuke those parts of themselves. So the child grows up believing that hating themselves is a virtue, and literally any aspect of themselves that they are told is sinful gets cursed and rebuked into the shadow. So healing our shadow is a process of deep internal investigation where we look inside of ourselves and find those parts of us that we rejected long ago and give them the love and acceptance that they need to be transformed into their highest expression. But shadow work is not easy at first because it requires us to be courageous enough to look those demons of our past in the face. Our abuse, our traumas, our mistakes, our fears, and our self-loathing, and meet all of those things with pure, unconditional love. Now, sometimes you may not be at the place yet where you have access to being able to do this successfully, and that's perfectly fine. You cannot rush your healing process. So if there's something that's feeling too difficult to face, then that's probably just a sign that there's other layers of self-rejection that need to be addressed first and you can sort of work your way up to the more difficult traumas of your past. But now I want to address something extremely important that is the number one mistake I see people making in their shadow work. Most of what I do with my personal clients is to help them identify parts of their shadow and then show them why feeling and reacting in the way that they did was not wrong. The whole problem with your shadow is not that something is wrong with you, but that you believe something is wrong with you. As long as you see your shadow as a broken part of you that needs to be fixed, you cannot heal it. Because the subconscious intention that this part of me is bad is still present. So many people wind up doing shadow work for years and feel like they've barely made any progress. And that's because they're still approaching it from the standpoint of you are broken and I want to fix you. And as long as you're approaching it from that angle, then all those fragmented parts of you are hearing is, oh, come here and let me love you so that you'll disappear forever. Think about the way we deal with our own children. If your child is crying, 
you know that they want you to just pick them up and love them exactly as they are in that moment. They don't want you to say, okay, I love you, I accept you, there. Now will you please stop crying already? We would never do that to our own children, but yet that's exactly what we do to our own inner child. So here's the solution that might seem a bit counterintuitive from a spiritual perspective. You have to allow yourself to feel all of it. Feel your hatred and anger without judgment. Don't say it shouldn't happen. Don't say that it's wrong to feel it. Welcome your hatred and anger with arms wide open and say, please come and express yourself to me. I have no judgment about you whatsoever. That is love. But Aaron, shouldn't we tell people that feeling hatred is wrong and they shouldn't accept it? It can't possibly be spiritual to tell people that their hatred isn't wrong. But in fact, it isn't wrong. Why? Because you cannot heal something by rejecting it. Love does not use labels and categories. It simply shines its healing light equally upon everything. Forgiveness is an unavoidable part of shadow work, and the reason that most people don't see progress is because they're trying to heal themselves while still holding on to a grievance. You cannot heal something you don't forgive. Not just forgiving the person who hurt you, but forgiving yourself for being hurt. Most of the pain we experience from our abuse is the guilt we have for feeling what we feel. And if you are a spiritual person, then you feel extra guilty for secretly hating your abuser, and yet you don't know how to stop hating the person who caused you pain. Love moves us outside of the world of duality. Good versus evil, right versus wrong. Love doesn't use these labels. And because of that, love reorganizes your perception to see something as it truly is, not as you labeled it. Your shadow is essentially trapped energy, and all energy must be felt out of the body. It cannot leave any other way. So allow every part of you to express itself without judgment. Everything is here to be loved, because love is the only healing energy in the universe. Love is the power that reorganizes erroneous perception and brings peace and clarity to chaos and disorder. Healing your shadow is not about fixing yourself, because there is nothing wrong with you. It's simply about changing your perception of yourself. The subconscious mind knows nothing of time, and so that little child who was hurt is still happening somewhere inside of you and is waiting to be loved and reconciled. They are waiting to be told that they aren't wrong for the way they feel and that nothing about them is broken. The whole problem is our own judgment. A Course in Miracles says, you have made everything that you hate. All of your judgments are still inside of you because no idea can leave its source. And so true inner healing happens instantly the moment you are fully willing to lay down your weapons of judgment and guilt. So your healing lies simply in being able to see the fact that there is nothing wrong with the way you felt. Everything happened exactly as it should have happened. You should have felt angry at that person. You should have felt hurt. Why? Because you believed that something had actually been taken from you. And so until you recognize that your true essence is beyond harm, then of course you believed that your value was diminished. Of course you believed that your innocence was stolen and you had been contaminated. True forgiveness and healing lies simply in knowing who you really are. Being able to see that you are already perfect and complete, that there is nothing missing, that your value cannot be diminished and your innocence can never be stolen. So healing the shadow will likely take you some time, and there's nothing wrong with that. Allow the process to play out exactly as it wants to. But it is helpful to know that all healing happens from the dimension of eternity, which means that all healing is instantaneous. We only believe that it's the healing that's taking time, but what's actually taking time is for us to come to the place where we are finally willing to surrender our need for judgment and vengeance. Once we come to the place where we're truly willing to surrender everything, the healing occurs. 
So it does not have to take you years and years of shadow work to heal yourself. You simply cannot receive the gift of healing when your arms are still carrying the heavy burdens of guilt and judgment. Guilt and forgiveness cannot be held at the same time. Otherwise, neither one has any meaning. You have to choose one or the other. So healing does not take any time. We take time to prepare ourselves to receive it. So remember, there are no wrong feelings or reactions. This is the essence of true spirituality. Everything is here to be loved. The part of you that is arrogant, the part of you that is insecure, prejudiced, jealous, or angry, no matter what it is, it is here to be loved. Because true love is unconditional, meaning that it does not require change in order to give itself. It simply radiates outwards in all directions, illuminating everything that it touches without discrimination. It does not battle with the darkness, but simply transforms it back into light again.